Hello and welcome to the first part of a new C++ project series and this project we're going to be doing is a music system probably for a game of some kind and this is just a little mind map or a brainstorm of the ideas that I had for mine because the whole idea of this is I'm going to show you how I make mine and how I've interpreted the task and then you guys you can make your own one and you can say this is how I did it either via video response or a comment or you could put it on Pastebin and send me a link on Twitter, or whatever you want to do. So the idea is to kind of get involved. So I've said simple, structured, flexible, and I want to be able to handle multiple tracks, I want to be able to loop a track, and I want it to be able to handle multiple notes at the same time. Maybe, I haven't incorporated all of these yet, this is just part one, and I'm just going to go through how I've done part one. So, I'm just going to open up my project and start off with. I have I've included iostream, conio.h, windows.h, and my special header file music.h, which I have created. So let's just go inside music.h, and basically it consists of this interpret note function, which takes a note, an octave, and is sharp. And what it then does is it'll take that note, and depending on if it's sharp or not it will convert that into a frequency and obviously it just goes it's supposed to go from C through to B but because of the fact that in fact it doesn't really do that anymore anyway the point, <laughs> the point being it converts your note octave and is sharp into a frequency so let's just go back we then use namespace standard and we start getting into it. So I've made a structure called music instruct and basically this is going to contain the instruction itself uh, parameter 1 which is a string, parameter 2 which is an int and parameter 3 which is an int and as I've just commented in here uh, basically music instruct is going to be for any given instruction so instruct is going to hold the actual instruction so for example note is my one for if we want to add a note to our track and get out of here. And uh, wait is my one for if we want to add a pause or a wait to our track. Param one then obviously can store various string values. And for a for adding a note to the track, that's going to be the note itself. So for example, C, C sharp, whatever. Param two, it's an int. And for the note, that's going to hold the octave. And param three, it's another int. And for the note, that's going to hold the duration. So then I create a class called music, and I made it all public. And in our constructor, we just set current place in track to zero. And current place in track is just an integer variable that I've made down here. So the two variables we have are current place in track, which is just an integer, and we have a music instruct array of 5000, which is called track. So all we're doing is when we first create the object, we want current place and track to be zero and basically what current place and track does is it just tells you where you currently are in the track so it starts to zero when you add a note it then switches to one so the next note will be added at point one instead of point zero so to demonstrate that we have our add note function which is to add a note to your track and that takes a note an octave and a duration and all we really do is we set the current place in the track, in the our track array, all to the stuff that you've specified. So the instruction is going to be note, param1 is the note you specified, param2 is the octave you specified, and param3 is the duration you specified. And then, very importantly, we add one to current place in track. So whatever they do next, whether that be add note or add weight, that then brings them to the next point where they want to add it. So next we have add weight and that takes a duration, and the instruct for that is wait, and we use param2 to store our duration. And once again, we have to add one to current place in track. So, now that we can actually add things to the array, and the array contains all the information we need, we need to be able to play the stuff from that array. So, our first function is play from start, and I made it an int, but we don't really need to be an int right now, that was just something that I did. So really, I may as well change this to void. 
I was going to do it for error handling, but it doesn't really matter anymore. So play from start, and what that does is simple for loop, which is going to do it 5,000 times, but it's not because we have a break condition. And here is the break condition. So if basically if the instruction isn't note or wait, so that's either if I've typed it wrong when I'm adding something, which isn't possible because I haven't created a function where the user specifies the instruction. Or it has just reached the end, so current place in track doesn't go any further than this, then just break. So now we want the instructions for playing a note. So if the current instruction is a note, then we get our second character of param1, and if that is a sharp or a hash symbol, then that means the note we want to be is sharp. So we're just going to beep and we're going to use the interpret note function from my music.h. We're going to pass it the note itself, which is the first character of our param1. We're going to pass it the octave, which is param2 of our current bit. And we're going to pass it 1 because this hash symbol is there. And this is the is sharp thing. And then we're also going to pass the beep the duration, which is param3, and then we do exactly the same thing, but if it hasn't got a hash symbol, we just do is sharp as 0. Then we handle the wait instruction, and this is much simpler. We just sleep for whatever amount of time, which is stored in param2. Now also, I decided to create play loop. By the way, just to tell you, all this code might be a little bit messy, and this play loop function isn't actually finished. I've just recorded the video halfway through creating this. And all this really does is you specify a number of times. Currently, you can't do that, but if you do zero infinitely loops, obviously it wouldn't be too difficult just to put in a for loop there to make that actually loop for the number of times you've specified. But if number of times equals zero, then it's going to do an infinite loop, and it's going to play from start every loop. So that's play loop. We're then going to go into our main function. We've just created the music object. So that's for our music class called track1. We're adding all this stuff to track1. And then we're saying, right, we want to infinitely loop track1, just like so. So if I debug this, this is just the music I've created using add note and a bit of experimenting. So I've just played around with octaves and the duration, which is in milliseconds, because beep uses milliseconds. And that's going to obviously loop forever. Like so. So that is my part one of this project. Obviously, I'll be adding things for being able to play multiple notes at the same time. Maybe chords, if I get round to it. And obviously, I'll be finishing the play loop function. And then there'll be lots of different things that I'll incorporate. But this is how I've personally interpreted the task. Once again, feel free to create your own interpretation or version, or just to follow along with this one and make something very similar to my version. So, that's the end of this video, and have a nice day.